When you buy a cycling helmet, you may, like me, just assume that it's gonna protect your head because you trust the brand that you've just bought. In which case, you may never actually pay attention to the little sticker on the inside of the helmet or on the box that tells you what safety standard it conforms to. But it is actually a good idea to know about the safety standards, particularly if you're just about to go and buy a new helmet. Now, the good news is that generally speaking, even the cheapest helmets from reputable brands will meet the right safety standards. And actually, a more expensive helmet isn't necessarily safer. In fact, it's not. It's just, well, better ventilated, more aero, lighter, looks cooler. Yeah, maybe not on everyone. The three main standards that we're going to talk about are the US, the European, and the Australian. Now, why three? Well, they're all ever so slightly different, although all will ensure that your helmet is actually safe as long as it fits you correctly. Now, they actually have quite similar test protocols, although similar only on the surface, perhaps, because the differences between them can actually be significant enough for a manufacturer to actually have to change the helmet itself in order to meet the criteria, generally just by altering the density of the polystyrene on the inside of the shell. Now, in order to do the testing, a manufacturer will send a number of the same helmet to an accredited test facility, where they will then be tested in various different ways, all of which you will be very glad that your own head is a long way away from. Now, so what are these tests then? Well, first of all, you'll be particularly glad to hear, impact testing. The helmet is fitted to a fake head which has sensors in it that measure force. It's then dropped from a height of about 1.2 to 1.85 meters onto a flat surface and at various different angles. And then, this is in order to mimic the effect of hitting your head on a curb, and I can barely say it without wincing, the helmeted fake head is then dropped onto the edge of an anvil. Now, in all these different tests, the forces detected inside the fake head mustn't exceed between 250 and 300 G, depending on what the standard is. So 250 in Europe and Australia, and then 300 G in the US. Then they also test for retention. So essentially, a hook is placed under the edge of the helmet, and then a 10 kilo load is dropped from 25 centimeters to create a sudden movement. Now, will the helmet stay on our by now battered and beleaguered fake head? Or more importantly, will it actually stay on your head in the event of a crash? Now, similarly, the straps are also subjected to a dynamic yank, which believe it or not, is actually the technical term for this. But it is essentially to find out whether they're strong enough or whether they will snap under extreme load. And then, this one is particularly interesting, in Japan, and only Japan, they do a hair oil test. So basically, they cover the helmet in white Vaseline, leave it for 24 hours, and then examine it afterwards. But I suppose that's quite a good thing. Lloydie's helmets are all subjected to similar tests on a daily basis. Finally, all these tests need to be carried out at ambient temperatures of between 17 and 23 degrees and 25% and 75% humidity. But then they all have to be done again at minus 20 degrees. So rather you cycling in that than me. And then plus 50 degrees as well. Again, rather you than me riding in that. But at least you know that even if you decide to stay in and ride on Zwift, at least your helmet will be all right going out. As I said, if you look inside your helmet, you will probably see a number of different stickers. Broadly speaking, all the tests put helmets through their paces. But Australia is actually considered to be the most stringent. It requires lower Gs in the impact testing and then also has a unique load distribution test where force is applied in a really small area. And because helmet use is required by law in that country, it really follows that you absolutely need to make sure that your lid conforms to those safety standards if you live there. But apart from that, what do you as a consumer actually need to know? Well, if you are buying a new helmet, you need to make sure, have a cursory look, to see that it conforms to the safety standards where you live. Now, in this case, casks supply helmets to the different territories. And so this one has a European safety sticker in it. But also bear in mind that in order for a helmet to function, it actually has to fit you and be adjusted correctly. Which, funnily enough, 
we've got a video about. Oh yeah, if you click just up there, I'll take you through to how to know categorically that your helmet is gonna fit you. Or for a bit of information about actually how to choose your helmet with Team Sky's Garrett Thomas, you can click just down there. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe.